full of faults and I'm full of flaws and I, I mess it up and I fall down, but my heart's right. This man is talking about being redeemed? Really? You're redeemed in your sin? My Bible says that God called you out of sin into righteousness. He came to free you from sin, not to be redeemed in your sin. He said to come out of that, to be free of that. So what are you talking about? Hebrews 5, 9 says that Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all that obey him, not disobey him. You're not redeemed when you disobey him. You're called to repentance. Don't you know what repentance actually means? To repent means to depart from sin, a change of mind that results in a change of action. He's saying you don't, you don't even need to do that. He never mentions repentance. I listen over and over to his videos. No repentance, just you know, accept Jesus. No, you need to be accepted by him. You need to come and offer yourself to the Lord and holy and blameless. You know, Jesus said he's coming back for it in Ephesians chapter 5. He's coming back for a church that's spotless without wrinkles. Oops, what's going to happen to you if you listen to this guy? Because he's saying you're never going to be spotless or, 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 or perfect or right with God. You're never going to stop sinning. Why do you think Jesus said go and sin no more in John 8, 11 and John 5, 14? Come on now, you got to quit quit messing up. And then he wants to talk about your, his heart's right with God? Come on, all evil proceeds from the heart, the Bible says in Mark chapter 7 and verse 23, 21. He says, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed all sin. That's why Peter told him in Acts chapter 8, he told Simon the magician they wanted to buy the Holy Ghost. He said, your heart's not right. God. If you're sinning, your heart's not right with God. That's what God said. Listen to the next. He mix that all up and come and hand it to you. What are you going to say? I'm not going to drink that. You're going to say thank you. So when your praise is messed up, God says thank you. And when you didn't get it right, God said thank you because I saw your heart. I, I knew you. I knew you meant to get it right. I, I meant to. I know you. I'm, I know you wanted to please me. Meant to get you right. Wanted to please you. You haven't even resisted sin through the shedding of blood, the scripture says in Hebrews 12, 4. This man's telling you that you're right because you wanted to? Where does it say that in the Bible? Can anyone show me that? Because you had a desire or because you wanted to. Him and John MacArthur come up with this thing out of their head. No, my Bible tells me that you must be obedient to enter the kingdom of God. He said that neither fornicators, adulterers, all these will not enter. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? But he's telling you, God saying, thank you for committing those sins? Wow! Nowhere in the scripture does that say this. This is a false preacher, a false teacher that's lying to you, who's coming to you in sheep's clothing. Inwardly, he's a ravening wolf because my Bible said by their fruit, you will know them that good that a good tree cannot sin. It cannot bring forth evil fruit. This man is admittedly saying he's doing that. What are you doing sitting under him? My Bible tells me that a man of God must be blameless, pure, and holy in, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, and also in Titus chapter 1, verse 5 through 9. You have no business sitting under him. You He's, need to repent. He needs to repent big time. Do what no one can do for you. Do it for yourself. Raise your hand and say, I'm, I'm, I'm the, you know, the apostle Paul said, I'm the biggest sinner that ever lived. Nobody is better at sinning than me. Wow. Paul never said nobody is better than sin at sinning. Men of God, one of the greatest men of God that ever lived, and you're going to speak that again. Him? Paul said to follow me, that we were example, we were examples unto you. He says that in Philippians three seventeen. Paul said in the same chapter, he says he says that in verse fifteen, he said for as many of us as be perfect. He's including himself. Said, as many as us to be perfect, be thus minded and follow our example. What kind of man that would be the biggest sinner, that would be the, the, the worst there is, tell you to come and follow me? My, Paul stood in front of this, the whole council in, in Acts chapter 23 and in chapter 24, and he said, I've exercised myself to always have a conscience that is void of offense, that has no sin. This is, the, this is the Paul that he's talking about. But Paul said in Philippians 4, 9, he says, those things that you both seen and heard and learned of me do. Do what I do. What kind of man could he be if he was a sinner and he's saying these kind of things? My God.
But, excuse me, but Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34, he says, don't be deceived. Wake up and quit sinning. What kind of man would he be if he was the biggest sinner you'd ever done and he's telling you to quit sinning? He'd be the biggest hypocrite there ever was. Quit laying on that man. That's a great, great man of God. You need to quit listening to this man. Why are you sitting there supporting him? Get out of there. He doesn't qualify as a preacher or a minister or a teacher. I've already told you that. Come out and be separate, saith the Lord, and follow Jesus.